Hi, this is Anil and welcome to the video tutorial on Java programming. So in the previous tutorials, you know, we have learned about the while loop and the do while loop and the remaining one loop that is available in Java is the for loop. So in this tutorial, we're going to learn about the for loop in detail. So this for loop is similar to the while loops or do while loops, you know, which is used to execute the statements repeatedly. So the syntax of this for loop is, you know, first we're going to use the keyword for and then a pair of parentheses, then a pair of curly braces. So between these curly braces, we're going to write the body of the loop that we want to execute repeatedly. And then here, unlike the while loop and the do while loop, we're going to have three segments. So the first segment is called the initialization. So all of you know that, you know, when we use the loops, we're going to have a variable, you know, which is used to check the loop continuation condition. So in the while loop and the do while loop, we were initializing that variable, you know, outside the loop. Now, I was declaring a variable somewhere and I was initializing it with some values. But here in this for loop, we can do that inside this parenthesis and then we need to have the semicolon and then we're going to have the loop continuation condition. So this is similar to the while loop and do while loop. Here we're going to use the comparison operators and you know we can form the condition. So it's going to be loop continuation condition. And then we're going to have the semicolon and then we're going to have the updation. So all of you know that you know if you don't update the value of the variable you know which is used for checking the loop continuation condition then our loop will be an infinite loop and you know at some point we want our loop to terminate and we can update our variable you know which is used to check the loop continuation condition here and this third part and here we're not going to have the semicolon just remember that all right so now i'm going to teach you guys an example of using this for loop so in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to print out learning lad rocks 10 times. So for that, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use the for loop. So it's going to be for and then we're going to have the initialization part. So here what we need to do is we need to initialize a variable, you know, which is used to check the loop continuation statement. What we can do is we can declare a variable outside the loop for example let's say counter here and we can initialize this variable here for example you know counter equal to one so i can declare the variable here outside and then i can initialize it here inside or i can declare and initialize the variable inside so it's kind of int counter equal to one and then the semicolon all right this is about the initialization part and then we're gonna check for the loop continuation condition here we need to form the condition so here in this case i want to execute my code 10 times so i'm gonna check whether this variable you know the counter variable is containing a value which is less than or equal to 10. so it's gonna be counter less than or equal to 10 then add the semicolon then we need to increment or decrement the value of this counter variable so that you know this condition will fail at some point so here in this case we're going to increment the value counter plus plus and we're not going to add the semicolon here so now what happens is you know for the first iteration when this for loop will be executed for the first time the loop is going to create a variable called counter and it's going to initialize that variable with a value of one and then it's going to check for the condition whether this condition satisfies if that condition satisfies then it's going to execute the body of this for loop so it's going to execute the body of this for loop once and then it will come to this third part you know which is the updation part so it's going to update the value of the counter variable now the value of this counter variable will be incremented and then it's going to check for this condition again if this condition satisfies then it's going to execute the statements again and then it will come back to increment 
then it's gonna check for this condition then it will execute if that condition satisfies like that so once this condition fails at that time you know it will stop executing the body of this loop and the control will come out of this loop and it's gonna execute the other statements in your program so here you know this initialization part will be executed only once you know for the first iteration or you know when this for loop is executed for the first time and checking for this condition and updation will occur for every iteration all right guys here what we're going to do is we're going to use the system dot out dot print line and we're going to say learning lad rocks and what we can do is we can print out the value of the counter variable also so i'm going to use the system dot out dot print method and i'm going to refer the counter variable and let's add a space you know just to make it pretty now i'm gonna save this program and i'm gonna run this now you guys can see we get one learning led rocks two three four five six seven eight nine ten you know the learning led rocks 10 times so here what happened is you know for the first iteration you know the loop is gonna create and initialize this variable called counter with a value of one and then it's gonna check for the condition whether this one is less than or equal to 10 yes the condition satisfies and that's why it prints one then the learning lad rocks now it will come to increment this value and now the counter variable becomes two and it's gonna check for this condition whether this two is less than or equal to 10 yes and that's why it prints two learning lad rocks then again it will come to increment now the counter will contain a value 3 then it will check for the condition which satisfies and it will execute the code and similarly you know when the counter value becomes 10 here the condition will satisfy you know 10 is less than or equal to 10 and that's why it's gonna print 10 learning led rocks and then it's gonna increment the value of this counter variable you know now the counter variable is gonna contain a value 11 and this condition fails because you know 11 is not less than or equal to 10 that's why the control will come out of this for loop or you know it will stop executing the body of this loop and if any statement you have in your program you know after the loop that will be executed so the important thing to remember is that you know when you use a for loop you know this initialization part will be executed only once in the first iteration and this updation part will be the action after every iteration all right the next thing that i want you guys to teach you is here you know this initialization and updation part can contain more variables separated by comma for example here you know we need to work with another variable in our loop for example let's say a variable called j so we can have that variable you know separated by comma so i can initialize this variable here let's say 10 and here in this updation part also i can have more variables separated by comma so i can increment the value of the j variable but in this loop continuation condition we can't have multiple variables separated by comma we should have only one condition so what you can do is you can use the comparison and the logical operators and you can form the complex conditions but can't have multiple conditions separated by comma so here i can't have you know j is less than uh, or equal to 100 or something like this so if you do like this we're gonna get the error but what you can do is you can have the logical operators for example you know uh, and here so i can group these statements here you know by using the parentheses so this is gonna work so you can't have multiple statements separated by comma but you can use the logical and comparison operators and you, you can form the complex conditions all right so what we can do is we can print out the value of this j variable here so i just gonna add the variable j and then a space and if i run this program you know it's gonna run for 10 times that's because you know when we use this and operator you know the both conditions should satisfy so this first condition will satisfy until the counter value contains a value of 10 and that's why you know this loop works for 10 times 
all right the last thing that i want you guys to teach you is you know about writing an infinite loop using the for loop so what you can do is you can skip the initialization and the updation part and also the loop continuation condition part so just write the empty statements you know uh, only the semicolons here so at that time you know when you don't write any statements here for the loop continuation condition java is going to treat it as true so so this condition will be always true and your loop will execute infinitely so this is about the for loop in java thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you guys have any doubt or any suggestions don't hesitate to tell us and also you know you guys can find the source code of this tutorial in my web blog learninglededucation.blogspot.com you guys can go there and copy the code so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next tutorial